Hi guys, welcome back to another video. The cold spell continues and we are looking at three to four distinct risks of snowfall across the UK and Ireland during the next week. And that's what we're gonna be looking at in this video. Now the most obvious and easiest to forecast snow risk is of course the snow showers. That's what we've essentially <coughs> had since about New Year's Day, especially across Northern Scotland, but more recently areas further south as well, are parts of Wales, Northwest England, the Southwest Ireland, Northern Ireland, and also the East Coast. And those snow showers, as you can see on the radar right now, are continuing. So we have some pushing into Ireland and Northern Ireland. We also have some pushing into Scotland. And then also we have a couple of snow showers now pushing into Wales as well. And then we have this blob of precipitation across Southwest Ireland, more on that in a bit. But as the cold air that we have in place uh, drifts further south, and it will actually get colder during the course of the day, we're going to see those snow showers increase in intensity and coverage because the cold air essentially acts as the instability and helps those showers develop. So this is the 850 hectopascal temperature chart from the UKV model. As you can see here, we have the minus 10 degree temperatures sitting across parts of Northern Scotland and those will move south. So during the day, those drift into parts of Ireland, Northern Ireland and Northern England. <coughs> And as that band of cold air moves further south, we are also going to see an increase in the coverage of those snow showers, potentially bringing some uh, widespread accumulations. So this is through kind of the afternoon, the simulated radar, and you can see large parts of, I mean, almost all of Northern Ireland there, uh, large parts of Ireland, Wales and the southwest, as well as, of course, Scotland, are likely to see some snow showers. And actually, the models have been picking up on a small feature uh, through parts of northwest England and Wales, which could actually uh, bring snow showers all the way into parts of southern England and the Midlands, uh, potentially even towards the London area, and that's to do with a upper level feature or just a, a kind of small disturbance just above the ground. So if we go to the 850 hectopascal t uh, wind chart, so that's showing the kind of winds around a kilometer to two kilometers above the ground, and you can see we have this subtle low pressure feature which comes down from the north, there it is in the North Sea, and extending from it to the west, we have this band of slightly enhanced flow and slightly curved sort of kinked uh, ice bars there. And so you can see that passes to the south, that's kind of over this sort of region here, through parts of the Irish Sea, Northern England, by 3 a.m. And just ahead of that, uh, and kind of along it, associated with those colder temperatures which are coming in from behind, we could see an uptick in shower activity. So I made this uh, graphic here, kind of a rough graphic to show the potential extent of shower activity uh, for the rest of today and all of Monday. Areas in white uh, are likely to see falling snowfall in my opinion, obviously not everywhere, this is kind of a bit broad, broad brush, there's going to be some places which don't see it, but this is a general risk of seeing falling snow and then light blue is at risk of seeing settling snow in places significant and like I said not everywhere is going to see settling snow, snow is notoriously hard to for forecast but this is just a broad idea. Uh, so you can see with that feature that comes in uh, from kind of the Irish Sea tonight, that's going to be overnight, that could bring the risk of snow showers to as far as parts of London and then we also see those snow showers once that passes through becoming frequent across this region here. Uh, same for Ireland and Northern Ireland and then of course Scotland. And then we also have this feature which I just talked about for a second earlier across parts of Ireland, that's this blob on the radar. Now that's associated with this small upper level feature here. You can see it just to the, oh, I've gone way, way too far on the model run. You can see that upper level feature just to the southwest of Ireland um, on the model. So that's here that you see where the winds change direction. We have a small circulation. It's kind of hard to notice, uh, but that will drift to the southwest. However, it appears to be going further north than expected. Uh, so most of the models had to the, to the south. You can see on the radar, it's actually further north. And so I expect this will give a covering of snowfall to southwest Ireland, especially high ground, because it will be a tiny bit more mild that uh, around there. And then overnight, this could give a surprise snow event to parts of the southwest, again, especially over higher ground. But the southwest will be seeing snow showers uh, anyway. So if we take a look at some of the forecast accumulations by the end of Monday, uh, so we've got those kind of snow showers for it being widespread. Uh, we also have snow showers down the east coast tomorrow, uh, as you can see here, could be heavy in places. Uh, but the UKV thinks that by tomorrow, um, the end of tomorrow, so let's see what the snow depths are. Yeah, this is roughly in line with our thinking. I think there'll be more widespread snowfall than this suggests uh, in terms of kind of the showery areas. So this does show accumulations of significant snowfall across Ireland and Northern Ireland, but I think we will see snowfall to no lower levels just because the temperatures are going to be so cold. And then of course we have those huge snowfalls across parts of Northern Scotland and then the East Coast, potentially some significant snow in there and then even into parts of Norfolk as well. And then this is where we potentially have our feature bringing snow showers into the Midlands, though this is fairly, fairly uncertain. And if we take a look at the 
uh, the Arome model, uh, I think this is a fairly reasonable outcome, to be honest, that Arome even may be underdoing the shower activity, so we could see more widespread than this, but I would be fairly happy to kind of bet on an outcome like this, with heavy snow showers down North Wales and Northwest England, and those become weaker with time, but spread through a fairly large region of the Midlands, uh, could give a dusting, unlikely to see, to see anything significant there. So those are the snow risks for today and tomorrow, but the pattern will start to change as we head further into the new week. So if we take a look at the models here, we're going to start to see more influence of zonal uh, zonal kind of northwesterly flow, and that brings with it some low pressure systems. So on Monday night and into kind of Tuesday, we're going to start to see three low pressure systems lining up. One to the northeast of us, uh, one to the northwest of Scotland, and then one further to the south of Iceland. You can see those three. Now, we've been, the model, not we, the models have been trying to figure out how those three are going to merge uh, for quite a long time. There's been a lot of uncertainty because that merging process is very, very difficult to figure out. Um, and if we take a look at the, the Dalmatian plots from the European model, so this shows you essentially it takes all the mini models within the European model and plots their position. And you can see those three lows that we're talking about. Uh, there's, there's well, we have kind of one here. There's also this one to the northeast. Um, and then we also have the, the one in between, and then that one to the south of Ireland. The problem is trying to figure out successfully in what way they will merge requires you knowing the exact position of all of them initially. But the spread in the exact position uh, is very, very large. You've kind of got this, this banana shaped spread over here. You also have this spread, this cluster over here, and then a very large spread for this low uh, in the North Sea. So it could be really any one of these dots could be the final position. So it's just hard figuring out where that's going to happen because that has big kind of knock-on impacts. You can see the, the range of uncertainty for the final low once it's merged is fairly, fairly large, extending all the way from the North Sea down into kind of west of Spain. That being said, <clears throat> currently the most favoured solution is to have a cluster uh, of kind of low pressure systems. You can see that cluster there, just the east of us in the North Sea. So coming down from kind of the north, that currently seems to be the most likely scenario for snowfall. And that would look like something like this model right here. So essentially, you get bands of snow across northern uh, Scotland, actually most of Scotland, and then into parts of northern England like this uh, early on Tuesday. And then as that second low merges, you get another band of snow. However, uh, as because of kind of the shape and positioning, <clears throat> you get a kind of mild sector uh, pushing in to parts of Ireland especially and then also into England and Wales as you can see that's the mild air kind of coming in from the southwest and so unfortunately in this scenario which currently seems most likely uh, what would happen is you just kind of have a showery band of sleety rain passing through most of the southwest potentially some mixed precipitation uh, across the far east and also higher ground. Uh, so unfortunately that snow potential, which was actually looking quite high a couple of days ago, has decreased, but that was always a possibility uh, because things are so uncertain. And just in this, the way that uh, it's gone, the snow chances have gone down for areas further south, they could go up a little bit if we see uptrends in the low pressure system strength or a change in the kind of orientation, which could change the orientation of the cold air. And given how large this envelope of uncertainty is, it's not without the realm of possibility for things to change. So uh, keep an eye on that. But like I said, the most likely for now <clears throat> would be this outcome from the UKV, just a more high resolution version of what I showed you basically. The band of snow across the north uh, develops early on Tuesday, then that pushes uh, kind of south, but instead it turns to rain across parts of kind of the south there. Um, so that's currently uh, one snow risk for the north, and that would bring accumulations for, let's see, uh, I'm guessing kind of five to 10 centimeters widely where that band moves through properly. Uh, let's see what the UKV thinks though. So, uh, the UKV thinks it'll be kind of less widespread, one to five centimeters, uh, seems reasonable, but snow forecasting, anything less than basically 12 hours is always gonna be unreliable. So uh, take that, uh, bear that with kind of a grain of salt. So <clears throat> that's the first low that comes in from the northwest. And on the backside, it will keep that northwesterly flow, as you can see there. So it will still be feeling chilly, uh, but then we get the next low pressure system coming in on the 7th. Now this one's really only popped up in the last day or so, and it looks to be kind of an elongated frontal zone all the way uh, from parts of Ireland, then down into kind of the UK. And so these elongated frontal zones are often fairly good in cold setups because they've got less energy. They kind of slide beneath the blocking um, and allow the precipitation to bump into cold air and cause snowfall on the northern flank, or in this case, the eastern flank. However, the blocking is now fairly removed to parts of Scandinavia. So quite a large distance, as you can see, between the low pressure and the high pressure, which means uh, that low pressure system can make... <clears throat> 
inroads with the mild air into the UK. And so while this particular run does show this band of uh, snow all the way from Scotland down into parts of uh, England, which does seem possible initially, I would be fairly confident in assuming that in the areas further south, uh, where you kind of got this boundary here, it's likely that that will turn to rain once the rest of the precipitation pushes through. One caveat is the models can underestimate the strength of blocking, so that could end up being a trend that kind of reverses and it kind of stalls there, bringing a band of moderate snowfall during the day, for kind of uh, Wednesday into Thursday overnight. Um, but because the initial certainty for this low is so high, the certainty for this low kind of depends on what this low does, uh, because the strength of this low may influence what kind of track that takes. And if you get the track that's further south and the blocking makes inroads, this is more drifty, that could kind of cause a more significant snow setup. So that's, as I said, the least likely solution right now. But because the uncertainty is so high initially, there is, again, very, very high uncertainty in where that low is going to be uh, on Tuesday, sorry, Wednesday into Thursday, this huge uh, range of positions. <clears throat> But in my opinion, right now, the most likely outcome seems to be another snow event for Scotland and Northern England, potentially into Eastern England as well. Now, in terms of the South, who probably feel a bit left out in the snow risk, your best chance is then going to come in the low after that, which will be Thursday, uh, Friday, and then Saturday. Three days, not because it's necessarily going to be super long lived, but because the uncertainty is so high. And I can see, can show you that low right here. So it starts off as this frontal wave uh, kind of moving through the Atlantic. Notice already massive spread of uncertainty, um, as is typical with these setups, but it does slightly consolidate. And this is, what time is this? Yeah, this is a kind of overnight Thursday into Friday. The models have now converged on having a low pressure system somewhere in this region. And potentially you can see by the green and blue colors, a fairly strong one as well. That's 980 to 970 millibars, not bad at all. Um, but the problem is there's a huge range in uncertainty of the tracks and way my, um, Maybe ordinarily this would not mean a huge kind of deal, uh, it would just kind of be rain. But because we've got the cold air in place, a track to the north uh, puts all of the south in that mild air properly. That's a proper mild air. That would even be kind of a windstorm risk uh, with very, very heavy snow through parts of Ireland, Northern Ireland and Northern England into Scotland. Whereas a track <clears throat> all the way on the south here into kind of parts of Northern France... The UK wouldn't see any snowfall from that, and in fact, we'd be left in the cold air. Something in between, which currently seems the most likely, uh, would be kind of through the channel, and potentially you're going to get some very interesting uh, events through the kind of M4 North. That's potentially where we're looking at for a significant snowfall risk uh, at the moment. But the uncertainty, as you can see, is very, very high. However, just to give kind of a number on those chances, I did make this graphic. I counted up all the ensemble members and I put them into these groups of scenarios and then uh, found the probabilities, or it's, I guess it's not really probabilities, it's more percentages uh, at this stage. Um, but you can see for kind of the overall, we're looking at 30% chance of the low going into France. This is an example on the UK Met, that's the low all the way into France. Uh, then 40%, so most likely right now, show the European type scenario. So the low either grazes the south coast uh, and then all, all goes through the channel and you get snow into kind of southern England, the Midlands there. <clears throat> And then 30% show uh, kind of the GFS icon type scenario. The low passes through kind of southern England and Wales, the Midlands, and you get snowfall on the northern flank. But notice here the GFS is a kind of an anomaly in this sense. The, it's the only one which shows a, the low going north of the M4 uh, being basically more than 20%. And it's very, very much above that 20% level. So this average is really being skewed by the GFS. And um, if you kind of take this away, we're looking at kind of 20% of the chance uh, compared to kind of the basically 30% it is now and then this still pretty much averages out to 40% but the chance of it going into kind of France is slightly higher uh, and one thing to note is the GFS is notorious um, in ca some cases for overdeveloping <coughs> sorry overdeveloping low pressure systems kind of out of nowhere so that is definitely something to consider um, I think it's interesting and also uh, we have seen similar events to this in the past so this is the chart for December 10th 2017 some of you may know that date uh, that was a very big snowstorm across kind of central parts of the UK and Ireland I was in London I was on the furthest south edge of the snow band and I got basically 10 centimeters of snow it was a really good event parts of the Midlands saw basically 20 centimeters or even more uh, so kind of this region here and it's a somewhat similar setup to what we've got now low pressure to the north uh, we've actually got similar strength ridge of around 1030 millibars in the Atlantic um, 
and then we have this low pressure system coming in down, uh, kind of slides down. This is what I mean, kind of the, those elongated systems are often better because they can slide around the cold air um, and then it develops later. And you can see the development I'm talking about. Notice it becomes fairly deep actually, uh, below 970 millibars, so probably deep low. And that was very important in this case because it really strengthened the temperature gradient and allowed strong winds cold winds from the north to undercut that precipitation and turn it into snowfall which is important for a scenario like this one because to be honest the depth of cold is just not quite there that the low on itself is kind of frontal wave and it pushes through that would be light snowfall uh, you, that's these scenarios here where the low is not very strong probably we wouldn't be seeing much snowfall at all we kind of need uh, the gold lock zone between it doesn't go too far north um and then kind of moves all the mild air away from the south um, but it needs to kind of go through the channel yet still be strong which is a problem because generally uh, the stronger your low is the further north it will go however there are still a fair few number of solutions which have this kind of middle ground um, so that's what we're going to essentially be looking out for uh, and just for fun i can finish off the video by showing you what some of these solutions uh, may look like so on the latest European model, uh, this was kind of a elongated low pressure system, kind of a good sign. But notice the temperature gradient is not strong enough because the low is not strong enough. So initially it's rain and then it starts to strengthen uh, into a more defined low pressure system. And that's when we get snow starting to develop across the south there, uh, as you can see. And we can go to a previous model run of the European model to give you another idea. Um, uh, so if you, yeah, let's play through this. Sorry, it just takes a bit of time. So you can see stronger low, so temperature gradient is stronger and you get kind of a longer lived snow period across the south. So I currently right now think this is probably the most likely scenario. Um, but the thing with these lows is they're very, very hard to predict. Um, the GFS, you can see what it had here. Um, you can see, so this is much more strong, much further north. And you can see brings kind of a very strong low blizzard conditions into Scotland, Ireland, Northern Ireland. Um, so this kind of starting to get the picture basically. The further north is stronger, um, but we kind of need it to be strong and further south. So it requires some kind of special uh, jet stream dynamics to allow initially a flat kind of uh, elongation, but then development later on, which is what the December 10th event showed. And by the way, I'm talking all of this in reference for snowfall from the south, so kind of M4 corridor northwards, just because I know that's where a lot of people are always asking. But if you're in Northern England, Ireland, Northern Ireland and Scotland, you're definitely going to be wanting this more developmental scenario, uh, which is certainly on the table. Uh, but you can see, so if we look at the jet stream pattern from the GFS, um, just to give you an idea, yeah, you can see how it's quite strong there. Um, and that's what allows it to develop so much. But potentially, I mean, I would be fairly surprised if it developed as much as it did, that could be the kind of bias overplaying it there. Uh, though one good thing is notice how the trough is kind of digging uh, kind of downwards, if the pen is going to work, the trough is kind of digging downwards into parts of Europe as opposed to kind of lifting up. And that's because we still have this blocking to the north of us. So this is a good sign. Models often underestimate the blocking. And so if I had to choose a trend for the GFS, it would be a trend south. Though trying to forecast trends is often a bit stupid in my opinion. That's just my kind of personal uh, my personal view. So that's kind of it for this video. Um, we're looking at snow risks um, through the UK and Ireland. The whole countries have got some sort of snow risk during kind of the next week or so, although it massively depends where and when. And especially as we go into kind of the ninth, that big low potentially could bring a lot of snow in places, but is very, very uncertain. So yeah, uh, I'll try and do more video updates, uh, but thank you very much for watching and have a good day, guys. Bye bye.